Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Nortman Reviews, and we are looking through the four issues of the animated movie of Transformers, an adaptation of the movie um, because of its 20th anniversary special edition. So this came out in 2006. So yeah, 1986 was the, the year that it came, the movie came out. That sounds right. I was four years old when it came out, and I remember going to see that movie. Um, I was originally going, there's four issues. I was going to do two issues in one video and two issues in another. But I started talking about, like, the comic book. And I started showing, like, the, the differences between the comic and the movie. And I have seen that movie so many times. I love that movie to death. And I started talking about all the things that weren't in the movie and explaining beat for beat and word for word many times what was happening and what they took out like this thing where like so they kill some of the autobots that was a much bigger deal than they show here like they didn't give the character of cup a proper introduction down here they skipped over so many things and i guess you have to like or this this comic book would be probably like 10 issues so it ended with the decepticons fighting like attacking Autobot City and Megatron and Optimus Prime having a huge battle basically to the death. The final page was Optimus Prime on his deathbed. He says, soon I shall be one with the Matrix. So we're going to go into issue number two. This is a pretty fucking at bat cool cover of uh, Megatron being turned into Galvatron. Um, we'll talk about some of the voices. I didn't talk about uh, who did the voices in the movie. Robert Stack did the voice for Ultra Magnus. They got a bunch of celebrity voices um, for the movie. Robert Stack was the guy in Unsolved Mysteries. He had done probably some other television or whatever. Loved his voice in there. Judd Nelson from uh, Breakfast Club and some John Hughes movies. He did the voice for Hot Rod here. Um... And what we're going to find out is Leonard Nimoy does did the voice for Galvatron, which was kind of cool because in the live action Michael Bay movies, the only the first one was really good. In the third movie, Leonard Nimoy did a voice for one of the Transformers, but it wasn't Galvatron; it was Sentinel Prime, something stupid like that. All right, so where are we? Prime's on his deathbed. So he looks to Ultra Magnus, and Ultra Magnus was like the commander of the um, the Autobot City. I don't know if he's the, is he number two or whatever, but he Ultra Magnus. You can tell he's bigger than the others. He has he's a um, a car carrier, um, so he has like a big like diesel cab like Optimus Prime, and he and he towed a, a trailer like this huge trailer. Um, much like Optimus. So, he's the obvious one to succeed Optimus, right? And um, Prime looks at him, Ultra Magnus, it is to you, old friend, I shall pass the matrix of leadership as it was passed to me. And he says, but Prime, I'm just a soldier, I'm not worthy. Prime tells him, nor was I. But one day an Autobot shall rise from our ranks and use the power of the Matrix to light our darkest hour. Now, in the movie, this is a hugely emotional moment. And the voice acting from Peter Cullen, who did the voice for Optimus Prime for years and to this day, it probably was never better than this moment in my eyes. Because he was able to emote the sadness of what was going on. Optimus Prime knew he was dying. And the music, the score in this movie at the time was incredibly beautiful and sad at the same time. At this moment when he says an Autobot shall rise from my ranks and right here it goes to a close up of his face and his eyes are kind of the power inside them are kind of flickering in and out a little bit and you could hear like he's almost crying. He's like and use the power of the Matrix to light our darkest hour and Ultra Magnus is just holding onto his hands, just like as tight as he can. You can almost see him like kind of squ like squirming a little, not squirming, but just like keeping a tight grip because he doesn't want to let go. He doesn't want Prime to die, to light our darkest hour. So then his chest opens and he pulls out the Matrix of Leadership. 
in the cartoon, up to this point, the matrix of leadership was not a thing. Um, that no one had ever heard of it. No one knew what it was. This was the first time we saw of it. Um, they explain what it does later, but it has like a power inside it. Um, but they transfer it from Autobot to Autobot to be the leader. And this is like, this is a, this is a saying, use the power of the matrix to light our darkest hour. So he pulls it out and everybody's just in awe of it. And the music and the movie kind of picks up to a little bit more hopeful as opposed to the depressing music. And then like Prime holds it up and he's going to pass it off. And he says, until the day, till all are one. And he's holding it and it just f falls out of his hand. His, he, he finally succumbs. He falls out. All the Autobots reach down to grab it. They don't want to, you know, to catch it. But Hot Rod here is the one who catches it. In the, this is, he catches it here and gives it to Ultra Magnus. Thank you for you, Ultra Magnus. Thank you, Hot Rod. Um, in the in the movie, Hot Rod picks it up and holds it up, and it emanates power as Hot Rod is holding it. And then he passes it to Ultra Magnus. And Ultra Magnus' chest plate opens up and he puts it in. And this is a weird moment in the movie. I don't know what happened, but he puts it in, takes it out, puts it right back in. That was a, like, they could have edited that differently. I don't, I don't know what that was for, mistake. So he puts it in. So the matrix of leadership has passed from Prime to Magnus. And then there was, um, they say, look, but um, they basically have a, uh, the, his vitals going on in the background. They were watching and they were like going, you know, as they do. But then they just started, there wasn't the beep, but they just flatlined. And the music turned back into kind of depressing music. Um, it, said, it has some like dialogue here, which is kind of not needed. I mean, like maybe you need it here in a comic book form. It says, so in the time of, it takes for a flash of light to flicker and fade. The great Autobot leader, Optimus Prime, dies. So, in the in the movie, it has a shot of you know Prime is in all his glory, red and blue and silver or whatever. But his body fades to a black and white and gray tone body. The life just fades out of him. And Daniel in the movie is crying. He has he's laying on his um, hand there, and it's just an incredibly sad moment for all of us. If you remember, if you were that of that age, I don't know what your parents did. I don't think mine did this, but a lot of parents made a lot of complaints because their kids were fucking crying in the theater over the death of Optimus Prime. G.I. Joe was supposed to do a movie as well, which I think only came out on video, but the main character in that, the leader, Duke, was also going to die. In that movie, I've, since I have, I have since watched, it's not nearly as good as this shit, um, Duke looked like he was going to die, and they got replaced by some other guys, um, Flint and all them, but he didn't actually die. He was just hurt and away for a second. But they changed that because of the outcry of what happened to Optimus. Um, so then it cuts to Unicron. That's kind of a cool shot of Unicron just alone in the depth of space. And it goes, it flashes to like this computer system with all these monitors, basically his brain. And he's replaying the moments of what just transpired here. And he sees the matrix of leadership go from Prime to Ultra Magnus. And he lets out a roar. He shoots out like these, these lights or whatever from this little center. And he roars. So he's angry about what happened here. So now it cuts to the Decepticons as they're flying in space on Astro Chain. And he says, jettison some weight or we'll never make it to Cybertron. A lot of the Decepticons are fucked up, um, including Megatron. So 
um, Starscream, he kind of steps up. He says, fellow Decepticons, Astro Train has requested that we lighten our burden. And the constructor, one of the Constructicons chimes in, in that case, I say it is survival of the fittest. Do I hear a second on that? And all the guys who are like feeling good, like they came out of the battle good, they're like, I and against, and all these like Insecticons and some, you know, whoever were like, nay. And he, Starscream says, the eyes have it. So all the Decepticons, they just turn on their gut, their dudes, their, who are like all fucked up. And they start pushing them out of the air, like the door into deep space. Um, and Starscream comes carrying Megatron's body. It's cracked and broken, pretty much lifeless. He says, oh, how it pains me to do this. Starscream has always, um, wanted to take over. He's always wanted to usurp the throne, so to speak. Um, not very loyal. And he is smirking as he's doing this. And Megatron's like, wait. I still function, he says. Wanna bet? And he just lets him go. And Megatron screams out, Star Scream! So, goes back inside and says, like, Well, as Megatron has, how shall we say, departed, I nominate myself as the new leader. So he's just like, I'm the new leader. The constructor comes like, wait, the constructor comes form Devastator, the most powerful robot. We should rule. But Soundwave chimes in. Soundwave superior, constructor comes inferior. Who are you calling inferior? No one would fall an uncharismatic bore like you. And um, Soundwave, as these guys are like challenging him, he, he um, ejects the um, Cassetticons. I don't know what you call these guys. Rumble, Frenzy, Rabbit, Rat, Bat, Laserbeak. He's like, hey, no one calls Soundwave uncrasmatic. Yeah, let's kick tail crate. Constructicons unite. So all the Constructicons unite as Devastator inside fucking Astro Train. Like, the dimensions just don't make sense. But it's a fucking cartoon. Who cares? And they say, no way. And they transform their um, um, arms into battering rams or whatever you call them. And they start pounding, jackhammering away on the ground. Causing it to rumble, because his name is Rumble. Rumble and Frenzy. And the Constructicons deconstruct. I don't know, they fall apart. And then all the Decepticons inside of um, Astro Train just start fighting amongst each other. So it, it goes to all the Decepticons that were just jettisoned into space. And they're just floating. And you hear, and they're floating towards Unicron here. Is that coincidental, or did they... Unicron knew this was going to happen, and he made his way towards them. But he kind of starts mumbling, and Megatron's, like, kind of lifeless and dead, but he's not... He's alive. And he opens his eyes, and this light emanates. And he says, Welcome, Megatron. And, it like, the force of the light and the his voice, because he's a fucking planet, whenever he talks, it kind of pushes like the force pushes him away because he's in space and he always has to like come flying back he says who who said that he says i am unicron show yourself i have summoned you here for a purpose so yeah he got him here somehow nobody summons megatron then it pleases me to be the first megatron tells him state your business Meg Unicron tells him, this is my command. You are to destroy the Autobot Matrix of Leadership. It is the one thing, the only thing, that can stand in my way. And like the light and the force of him is just kind of blasting on Megatron. He says, you have nothing to fear. I have already crushed Optimus Prime with my bare hands. In the movie, <laughs> Unicron says, you exaggerate. The point is he's dead and the Matrix has died with him. He says, no, the point is you are a fool. And the Matrix has been passed on to their new leader. Ultra Magnus destroy it for me. And he says, why should I? What's in it for me? And um, Unicron 
says, he starts torturing him right there. He's like, okay, um, if you're not going to do this for me, I'm just going to like eliminate you right here. And so Megatron says like, no, I accept your terms. I accept. And he says, excellent. And he goes through this uh, transition as he, he repairs Megatron. Um, cause when he said like, what's in, he said, what's in it for me? He's like, I will give you a new body, a new ship and new troops to command. And he's like, and then what else are you going to give me? And he says, and nothing. You belong to me now. He says that in the movie. He doesn't say it quite here. Oh. And he does kind of say it right here. I should provide you a new body and new troops to command. So he changes him. This was a cool sequence in the movie. The music was going on. Cool animation. Um, the animation on this Transformers movie in 1986, I think, holds up to this day. And it's the, some of the best 2D animation I have ever seen in any genre, you know, or, or you know, in any movie, TV show, anything. I hold it up to all the Disney movies, anything that came up that was 2D. Yet in the 3D Toy Story, Pixar stuff, that's kind of different, but I still really enjoy this, this ship. And he forms him into Galvatron. Badass, like, fucking cannon, much like Megatron had. And he's looking at all the other Decepticons with him. He's like, and these shall be your minions. And he says, Scourge, the tracker. And his huntsmen, the sweeps. Um, so he turns all these guys into Scourge. And the sweeps are basically just versions of scour Scourge. And Cyclonus, the warrior, and his armada. Which I don't quite understand what that means. There's basically two of him, but there's only one Cyclonus in the show. Cyclonus was a badass in the show, and he was a toy I had. I always liked Cyclonus. And this shall be your ship. He gives him this um, spaceship. Now go destroy the Matrix. And it doesn't have it here, but first time uh, Galvatran, Galvatran, Galvatron talks in Leonard Nimoy's voice. He's like, I shall rip open Ultra Magnus and any other Autobot until the Matrix has been destroyed. And he says, to Cybertron! So they're going to Cybertron first. And it cuts to, um, on Cybertron, um, a ceremony going on. In the movie, you hear like these horns. Do, 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 do. All these uh, these uh, Decepticons keep blowing these horns for this music. For this coronation of uh, Starscream. And he's like, get on with the ceremony. And they're like, uh, what does he want? And so they start shooting, like playing again. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And Starscream gets mad and shoots and blows off the tips of all the horns. And they're like, Bleh! it was kind of a funny moment. So um, they present Starscream with this crown on his head. He's got this cape. He like, thinks he's a badass. My fellow Decepticons, as your new leader... And then a, a, sh a ship comes swooping in. And Starscream yells, Who disrupts my coronation? Cyclonus was the ship. And Galvatron was um, piloting him, basically. And they both... He, Galvatron jumps out and they both transform. And they land. It's like, Coronation, Starscream? This is bad comedy. Starscream says, Megatron? Is that you? Here's a hint. He transforms... And now he's not a, a, a handgun like Megatron was. He's like um, a fucking cannon, a stationary cannon um, that's pretty, it's as big as he is as in robot form. So he says, here's a hint. You see it there, right? And he just aims upwards these stairs and just blasts fucking Starscream. And it goes, and he's like in a lifeless black and white body, much like Prime was. But he starts disintegrating. His body is just falling apart piece by piece. And the the crown comes tumbling down the stairs. Clink, 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 clink. Comes up to Galvatron as he transforms back into his robot. He just steps on it. Crushes it. Um... And, uh, I can't remember if Galvatron says anything in the movie here. I don't think he does. Um, but, uh, the little, uh, 
Rumble here. He says, what did he say his name was? And he says, Galvatron. And all the Septagons, long live Galvatron. Hi! So Galvatron took, like, eliminated Starscream, took over the rest of the Decepticons, along with commanding the new ones that Unicron made. Unicron's spawn. So then it cuts to Unicron coming up to one of the moon bases here. And there's Jazz and Cliffjumper. Hey, <laughs> Jazz, where'd that come from? And, like, it's, they're like, oh, my God, what? it's coming right at us. And Cliffjumper says, who cares? I'm more worried about where it's going. And so, like, these tusks or whatever they are, um, these, these arms are, that are on Unicron, they start, like, digging in to the, the moon base. And so he gets on the communication. He's like, talk to me, Earth. We got a situation out here. Uh, Roger me, will call me. Hello, anybody. Hello, hello, Earth. And Blaster's picking that up. He's like, I'm picking up a faint signal. This is Jazz, a ginormous, weird-looking planet. Just showed up on the suburbs of Sabatron. And it's attacking Moon Base One. And uh, the Autobots are like, Jazz, cliff jumper. And they're they're running to a shuttle. He's like, we've got to blast free if we can. Ignition and hit it! So they go blasting away at the last moment. But um, the, the, the force, the gravity, or the suction of Unicron, like, stops the, the shuttle from escaping. He says, Jazz, we're not getting away! And they're sucked into the mouth of Unicron there. So what happened to Spike and, I mean, Jazz and Cliffjumper? Now you got Spike and Bumblebee up here on Moon Base 2. And they tell him, this thing, this monster planet just ripped the first moon to shreds. And it's heading this way. We'll try and slow it down, but you better get here fast because we're not going to. And then, like, the, the communication just cuts out. So they get a faint signal, and they're talking about this fucking weird planet just came up, and it's coming at us, and it takes out Jazz and Cliffjumper. Then they hear from Spike and Bumblebee, like, it's coming right for us. And the kid, Daniel, he's like, Dad! Um, and they don't show it here either. And, but basically, um, Bumblebee and Spike, they get some explosives. He's like, Bumblebee, activate the explosives. And they're like, um, like getting a timer going. It's like, if this doesn't stop it, nothing will. The explosives are activated. Let's get out of here. So they do the same thing. They get on a, a, a shuttle and they, 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 they blast off. They totally disregard it here. But Bumblebee and Spike, they blast off. And as the timer reaches zero, Unicron like consumes the planet. And then it blows up. A huge explosion rocks the shuttle that they're in back and forth and makes silly-ass Bumblebee topple over in his chair. And they're like... Awesome, we did it. They're like, ha ha, yeah, woohoo. But then as the smoke and debris or the blast clears, Unicron is still there. And they're like, look, it didn't even dent it. Again, that's not in here. And they're like, what are we going to do now? And then the light just emanates. And then they are sucked into it as well. So Jazz Cliff Jumper, now Spike and Bumblebee, four people that we know and care about, were just sucked in to this Unicron planet. Hey Rusty, you're back. You're gonna fuck up my recording again. So from Cybertron, Galatron is watching and he just watched him take out two moon bases. And, um, right, Rusty, are you a little kitty Cybertron? Are you a Cybertron? Are you, a, are you an Autobot? Are you a Decepticon? Yeah, you're a little shit is what you are. Okay. So he's like, how did all the, the Cybertron and all the moons belong to me? But then, even from a distance, Unicron exerts his power over Galvatron, starts torturing him. And uh, Scourge here, he's like, remember, we belong to him. I belong to nobody. And he's just in pain, but he's just, uh, he says down here, I will obey Unicron, and he stops torturing him. So, like, don't get out of line, Galvatron, or you're going to get it from me. Um, yeah, right? That's fucked up, huh, Rusty? 
So Galvatron says, Decepticons to Earth! So they they go blasting off to Earth. Um, so the remnants of the Autobots that are on Autobot City, they, they just went through a horrendous attack. So there's not a lot of them left. They don't have a lot of troops. They don't have a lot of manpower or robot power. But Magnus, Ultra Magnus, takes charge. You know, prepare to board the shuttles. This new menace is more dangerous than all the Decepticons put together. Somehow we must destroy it before it devours Cybertron. And the kid, what about my dad? We'll do everything we can for Spike. And um, it doesn't say it here, but um, Springer, it's like, what are we going to do when we get there? That th thing crunches moons. It'll make short work of us. And Magnus says, maybe the Matrix can stop it. And Hot Rod, for some reason, you're like, you're right, it can. Cup tells him, what do you know about it, lad? And he says, I just got this feeling. But as they're talking about this, they, in the distance, they look out, look, and there's, it's hard to tell here, but it's the fucking Decepticons, you know, Galvatron, all those guys. And they say, to the shuttles! And uh, Galvatron is uh, piloting um, Cyclonus. And uh, he says, and how, how they hear each other, I don't know. It doesn't matter. He says, I, Galvatron, will crush you just as Megatron crushed Prime. And you'll, try die, you'll die trying just like Megatron as Ultra Magnus shoots back and hits him. And he's smoking here. He says, Autobot scrap. And Scourge. You want me to gut Ultra Magnus? There are plenty of Autobots for you. Ultra Magnus is mine. So they're, um, this is kind of a fun little moment. They're shooting down at um, Hot Rod, RC, and Daniel. And RC says, stay close to me, Daniel. And Hot Rod tells her, and you better stay close to me. But as these guys are swooping in, she grabs Hot Rod, moves him out of the way of the fire. He says, no, you better stay close to me. So there, there you can see like the flirtation a little bit between these two, which never panned out anywhere else. Um, and <laughs> then in the movie, it cuts to Blur, and he's trying to get the Dinobots into the uh, shuttle. He's like, nice Dino, good Dino, sweet Dino. What you get in the shuttle? Pretty please Dino, a good Dino, sweet Dino with sugar on top? And uh, Dinobot, I mean, Grimlock says, Me, Grimlock, not nice, Dino. Me, Bash Brains! And he turns and he shoots fire at some of the incoming uh, Decepticons. I think he hits Galvatron, Cyclonus. And then more comes swooping in, and he turns and he shoots more fire. One of these others shoots fire, and he, one, in the movie, one of the, the flying Decepticons kind of goes spiraling and crashes into a mountain. And uh, the rest come up, and Magnus yells at Blur, like, Blur, get the Dinobots in the shuttle. And Blur tells him, again, in the movie, he's not here. He's like, I'm trying to get in the, the, in the shuttle, Ultra Mags, but I'm trying, they won't get in the shuttle because they're impossible, impossible, impossible. Okay, forget it. Cup, Hot Rod, you guys get the Dinobots aboard and get out of here because there's two shuttles. All right, Rusty, get out of here. So uh, Hot Rod, he takes, he gets a, some rope or whatever, and he lassos it around um, Grimlock, and he pulls him in. He's like, come on, you big bozo, get in the shuttle. So Cup and Hot Rod um, get the Dinobots into the shuttle, and they take off right there. And all the rest are going to the second shuttle. And as they're going on, as they're about to take off, they're like, wait, Ultra Magnus, RC is still out there. So they're, they're flying away, and RC is running alongside. And Springer yells at her to jump. She does. He grabs onto her, um, and he pulls her in. And uh, in the movie, Daniel says, that was close. Um, and Springer says, uh, oh, God, I forget what he says. I hear, I hear every line in my mind, and I forget what Springer says. Oh, yeah, he says, believe it or not, this is the fun part. So they get on the ship, and they're like, hurry, and they blast off. So the two, the Autobots both escape into two separate shuttles. And um, Ultra Magnus reports, says to them, congratulations, Autobots, we lost them. Rest while you can. And uh, Grimlock comes up. He's like, tell Grimlock about Petro Rabbits again. Um, 
<laughs> they actually did that in the movie earlier when they were about to take off. They like he wanted to learn about petro rabbits, and Cup's like, "I'll give you petro rabbits," and he igni- ignites the, you know, ignition, and they blast off there. Um, so now, but then they go off, and like Cup is actually telling them a story because he's an old timer; he has all these war stories. And um, Hot Rod in the movie, he was practicing with like a practice droid or something like that, like fighting. Back and forth. He's like, hey, Cub, don't you think we have better things to do now than tell old stories? Like what? Like, I don't know, maybe how to figure out a way to rescue our fans and save Cybertron. And all the uh, Dinobots are like, no, tell story. Quiet. We want to hear story. Um, and then there was more with the, the, the droid he was sparring with, but that doesn't matter. Um, but at that point... The Decepticons um, get the drop on them. Um, yeah, it doesn't. They, they skip so much. They just rush through everything here again, as you probably need to in a comic book. Um, and um, in the they were talking about this reminds me of the um, the battle of something something. And Cup is trying to tell them like. Like, what did you do in this instance when you had something going on? It's like, it's like I'm, I'm trying to remember. There was an awful lot of casualties that day. It's like, oh, yeah, we inverted polarity. So they shoot down this beam, and it fucks up with these missiles um, that the Decepticons were shooting at them. Um, and then it says Cyclonus transform and attack. So Cyclonus comes out of the Decepticon ship, and he goes towards uh, Autobot, I mean, uh, the shuttle with Cup and Hot Rod. And he starts just shooting them down. Like, they have no defenses, pretty much. And he says, I can't control it. We're going to crash. And there's just this random planet that they're by. And the shuttle that these guys are on crashes on that planet. And it goes to the others. And Springer says, Cup and Hot Rod just bought it. Magnus tells them, I can't deal with that right now. Um, Springer tells him, face it, Magnus, the Decepticons are going to dog us until they see us dead, Magnus says. Well, then that's exactly what they're going to see. Prepare for emergency separation. That's too dangerous. What choice do we have? So what happens is, like, they have a huge shuttle, right? But they eject, it's like they, they, um, eject the front part, separate it from the, from the others. So as the missiles are coming in the missiles hit like the rest of the ship and the Decepticons don't see the front part of it escape. So it blows up and um, Galvatron is like, I did a good job. The Autobots have been terminated. Excellent. And the Matrix with them. But Unicron fucking knows and he starts torturing him right here. He's like, Unicron, why? He's he's being tortured. and um, Galvatron tells him like, Take me to, he's like, take me to Unicron. Take me now. So then you see um, the Autobots, they got away. They have a moment to, like, breathe. Um, did we have to let them detonate three quarters of the ship? Seeing as how they would have detonated four quarters, I think it was a good choice. But how are we going to get there in, get there to Cybertron in this wreck? Perceptor, can you locate a place to sit down for repairs? Um, in the movie, Perceptor starts talking some more science junk and just boring everybody. He's like, basically like, uh, yes, I believe I can. The planet of junk is in this vicinity. Then let's go for it. So they have a destination. Um, and then it goes to, it cuts to where Hot Rod and Cup are. And, um, it shows here, um, that they're underwater and Hot Rod is kind of being overtaken by these weird robotic tentacles and these weird sea, robotic sea creatures. So, that's the end of this issue um, and this point of the uh, the story. So we're going to stop this video here. Um, we're going to... What else? Transformers Escalation. Just a sneak peek. More Transformers comics. They did a lot.
They were trying to like milk that cow for all it was worth. And I bought the Transformers Beast Wars. That wasn't really anything, even though Beast Wars is a tremendously good TV show. Um, Spotlight comic books, Shockwave, Nightbeat, Six Shot, Ultra Magnus, Hot Rod. All right, so that's the end of this. Um, thank you for watching. If you liked uh, this movie, then you should give this video a like. Um, and uh, thank you for watching. We will get on to the next one. We'll see you there. Thank you again.